Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday evening to you all. Hope you guys are feeling well out there tonight. Fed yourselves a great day and a great work week as we're about to make our way to the end of it. And we're all thankful that tomorrow is Friday and then the weekend. So uh, tonight what we're going to do is discuss two main topics, one being the tropics and one being a big time potential pattern change around mid-month. It's already been below average for a lot of the eastern U.S., but there's a chance a chance that it can get well below average as we enter the mid-month time frame. So we're going to talk about a big potential for uh, some well below average temperatures. Not just, you know, for areas in the north, but areas to the south too, southeast, mid-Atlantic. So stick, stay tuned for that. We're going to talk about that in the second half of the video. But the first half, we're going to break down what is now a potential tropical cyclone 13 in this forecast to become Hurricane Julia, and then impact areas of Central America. So we'll give you an update in the beginning of this. If you guys have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button for me. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way in really getting the content out there, especially when things aren't quite as active as uh, they can be. But uh, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Great ways to follow along. It really is, especially Twitter. Um, and if you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over, please put it in the comments below. And you guys certainly have. It gives me an opportunity to pray over them. And I normally do every single morning. I try not to just read over them and pray for them right then. What I normally do is I wait till when I wake up in the mornings and I jot them down when I read them. And then I'll actually pray for them. Pray over all your prayer requests in kind of the quiet morning time where I really have a chance to really actually focus on each individual prayer request so and i'm sure other people do the same so certainly do that guys um and certainly appreciate you guys praying over my situation that i mentioned this morning just the ongoing evolution with these plumbing issues but in the grand scheme of things what i try to remember and i try to actually coach myself internally is that you know a plumbing issue is is, is first world problems right you know and uh mo people you know have much bigger issues people are losing their homes people are losing a child people you know are, are, are dying of a disease so i try to keep things in perspective but um we pray for each other whether it's big or small here so i really appreciate the prayer requests i really do so let's get rolling here so let's take a look at what's going on with ptc 13 that stands for potential tropical cyclone 13 and it really looks, looks like a big sloppy area of convection the center of it somewhere in here but sometime between uh, overnight into probably sunday it's going to enter an environment right here in the southern caribbean where it's going to have a chance to strengthen it's not going to strengthen super quickly but there's really going to be an opportunity right in here where it's going to try to strengthen into a hurricane and it's actually forecast to strengthen into an 85 mile per hour hurricane and make landfall somewhere in nicaragua and then you got um uh, areas you need to watch out for honduras too because you guys are going to get impacts belize Guatemala, you guys are going to get impacted too. Down to Costa Rica, uh, you know, you could get some impacts, but it's looking like this is going to really develop somewhere in here and make, make its way right into Nicaragua right here. So let's give you the latest update from the National Hurricane Center per, per around the 5 p.m. update. We have a potential tropical cyclone 13 out here. Uh, still got depre tropical depression 12, but not expected to become Julia. This is going to most likely become Julia forecast to do so we actually look at the cone you got tropical storm warnings up for areas of uh, the northern coastline of uh, Colombia and I believe that is areas of Venezuela also um, and then you got some hurricane watches out for these islands out in the Caribbean and then as you can tell uh, Nicaragua even areas of Honduras even Guatemala Belize uh, you guys are in the cone, El Salvador. So it's forecast to make landfall as a hurricane in Nicaragua sometime overnight Sunday night into Monday morning. And we get a better look at this, and here it is. This is around where the center of the storm is. It's going to most likely become a named storm sometime overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. Still continuing to strengthen, and around 2 p.m., Saturday afternoon forecast to be a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. Then by the time you get into 2 a.m. Sunday, an 85 mile per hour category one hurricane, it will make landfall sometime Sunday morning, most likely into Nicaragua and bring a lot of rainfall for Honduras, obviously Nicaragua, Guatemala, Belize. But it looks like most of the action will stay south of areas of the Yucatan Peninsula. So I don't think you need to worry if you're in Cancun vac vacationing. I actually got a co-worker that's going to 
vacation in Cancun between, I think, this weekend through sometime next week, and they were a little bit worried about the system. But it does not look like it's going to be a big deal for this area for the north, but this will be a big deal for you folks in these areas right in here. So go on and prepare for a hurricane and flash flooding. There's higher elevations in this region. In fact, let's take a look at the latest GFS. Sometime between tomorrow morning and, you know, as you can tell, we're getting to Friday evening. We're getting into Saturday morning. And I really think this will have a, this is when it has a chance to intensify. And I think that this could peak at around a Category 2 hurricane. I think there will be an opportunity in here for not maybe rapidly intensification, but I really think it could strengthen moderately over a short amount of time. And here we go again in a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. I think at this point, sometime this coming Saturday evening, uh, in the next 48 hours, I think this will be borderline hurricane and about to make landfall in Nicaragua as a Category 1 hurricane around Saturday morning. This is what the GFS shows. European, same kind of deal. They're both pretty much set in stone on this. Um, sometime Sunday morning, this makes landfall. The European wants a 986 millibar low pressure. I would argue that's probably a Category 1 hurricane. But I do think this has a high ceiling of potentially being a Category 2. I do, you know, let's hope not, but I think that's the high ceiling. I don't think this is going to make major status, which is category three or higher. But for you folks down here, even all the way up to Belize, you know, watch out for some heavier rain. And, you know, the the worry is, is this could potentially drift a little bit, move a little bit west-northwest and bring some heavier rain. In fact, the GFS shows this scenario much better. Um, you know, it has a low pressure moving whatever's left over Julia, moving right over Belize sometimes Sunday evening into, you know, Monday morning. This will bring a lot of heavy rain, and it almost tries to sneak it back over uh, the Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche. Let's hope it does not do that. But this will bring a lot of rain for Central America in general. So, all right, let's go on and switch topics. So, I know I've showed you this many times over the last few days, but this is the temperature outlook between the next 6 to 10 days. So, this is the 12th to the 16th. Below, below average temperature still predicted. Anywhere from the Ohio Valley to the Mid-Atlantic to the Northeast, the areas of the Carolinas and the Southeast. Um, obviously, you know, this little shade of blue here is just a 33 to 40% chance of below average temperatures. You get into this shade, that's more of a 50, 40 to 50% chance. But really what I'm, what I'm checking out is this 8 to 14 day range. This takes us all the way through the 20th of October. This gets updated every day. So this is the new one that was issued today. And I mean, confidence is even higher further out of below average temperatures, guys. I really think there is there is a sign here on the ensembles and most model guidance that we're going to have some kind of what we call a cross-polar flow. And this is actually a, an exceptional pattern for a winter storm in the Northeast, if or the Mid-Atlantic, or really anywhere in the eastern U.S., if we were a little bit deeper in the gear, but we're not. We're not, uh, we're just, uh, you know, we're in October still. We're in October, but... Watch, because I, if you folks in the Northeast, and by the way, I think you guys will see some snow showers tonight in the UP and Michigan and northern Wisconsin. You know, don't don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty confident on that. But I think that we'll have some snow showers. There will be an, a period sometime mid-month that we're going to have some snow in the interior areas of the Northeast. Listen, I'm telling you guys, the fall foliage is, you can either say it's, it's on schedule, which is very common over the last several falls. We have been well, well behind schedule, meaning a lot of areas are staying green a lot longer, a lot deeper in the fall. But this year, we were either on schedule or ahead of schedule, which I'm kind of worried because I got actually a trip to Gatlinburg schedule for the first week in November, which actually is where it peaks around that area. And then I'm taking a trip to Mount Pisgah in uh, literally two weeks. And I think that it's going to be past peak in that area. So that's pretty high elevation. But um, still looking forward to a good time. Got multiple trips over the next several weeks to head to the mountains. And uh, I, the older I get, the more I love the mountains. But anyways, I'm going off on a rambling thing there. But below average temperatures look almost certain throughout the rest. Now, you're going to have warmer days. You're going to have warmer days in between cold fronts. Like today, it hit 84 degrees here in Columbia, South Carolina. That's warm compared to what we've seen. And tomorrow will probably be a little bit warmer. But this is what I watch. I know I haven't showed you guys this in a long time. This is heights and anomalies. So basically it shows us high pressure, ridge of high pressure. It shows us troughing, which is in the blue, which is think of that as cold fronts. So here comes this little 
uh, cold front that moves through throughout the weekend into early next week. This moves through. We might have a moderation of temps. And then this is the European ensembles, arguably the most reliable long-range model guys that you can look at, the EPS ensembles. This is what you definitely look forward to look look to when you're looking for a winter storm somewhere or basically a big time dump of cold wear somewhere in the east central to eastern US. This is what you call a cross polar flow, which basically means you got true Arctic air coming from the polar region, basically the, the North Pole, uh far areas of northern Canada. And here it is. You see this troughing coming down all the way through Canada all the way into the US. This tells me that there's a signal here, and I'll stop this. This is for literally about a week out from today. There's a strong signal here for a big time trough or cold front about a week out from the day, 180 hours out. Now, one thing you gotta watch is does this moderate or does it increase in confidence? But this is a strong signal. You got stout ridging to the west, you got big troughing to the east, and you got this coming from the polar region this is a strong signal for some kind of blast of cold air in about a week. It really is. And this continues. And in fact, you know, you go past 10 days, which is an unreliable time frame. It almost looks like it reloads. But in general, you got continuous troughing showing up. Uh, there's some whispers in the weather community that it's looking like we're going to have a cold November or a cold start to winter. So maybe a front loaded winter, which uh, if you're a big fan of, uh, it being wintry around the holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, you certainly pull for that. Uh, most people do not agree, but uh, I'm one that I'm a person that I would sacrifice the entire winter for a major winter storm in the southeast just to get a snowy scene for Christmas time in the south. I would, I mean, that would be literally a dream come true for me since I was a kid. So, what does this look like temperature wise? Which is probably what a lot of people are wondering. So. This is, you know, starting off next Tuesday morning, so I know we're kind of far out. Um, cold air lingering around, average to below average temperatures, but then temperatures will moderate sometime midway next week, and it'll warm up, you know, warm back up into the 80s, all the way up to maybe Washington, D.C., mid-Atlantic. But look at the cold air up here, and this is the European model. So we'll keep this rolling here. A little blast of cold air moves through, uh, you know, knocks temperatures back down, some chilly nights, you know, Temperatures in the 30s for the Ohio Valley, nothing too crazy, nothing super uncommon. Below average temperatures, sure, but nothing too wild. But one thing you watch for is a big moder moderation in temperatures right here. But this looks like a giant cold front coming in around 10 days out. But that's pretty far out. And it's different than the GFS because if you look at the latest GFS, the one that literally just came out, we get, we get through this little little cool shot that we get this weekend into early next week. Temper temperatures moderate. We're getting all the way back into the 80s, 70s in the Ohio Valley. But then look at this blast of cooler air that moves through um, as we get into about a week out. And then this to me looks like one of those these you know huge uh, in, uh, central to eastern coast clearing cold fronts right here. So this is around Saturday morning of next Saturday morning, October 15th. When you look at these sub-freezing temperatures all the way down here, you got freezing temperatures. I would argue that this is probably sub-freezing temperatures in the Ohio Valley. And then this is a cold air mass right in here. But, um, you know, we got to see. You know, it shows another cold blast behind it and really cold temperatures the past 10 days. But we got to work this. We got to see the ensemble support it, which I would argue you would lean towards more than the actual operational runs. But I'm really thinking. And the experts are too, which is the people you really need to pay attention to. I'm really thinking sometime about mid-month, we're going to have a blast of cold air. And, um, I mean, this is just the fall that keeps on giving, in my opinion. So, um, we certainly love it if you're a cold weather fan. And uh, it's certainly kick-starting the vibes of fall. If you hadn't already either, I know uh, me me for sure, you know, I already feel like it's, it's already felt really like fall out there. But that's all I got, guys. Um... You know, God, God bless all y'all. Sorry, my phone's ringing. I'm a little distracted. God bless all y'all. Y'all have a great night, and I'll have you an update in the morning. Y'all have a great night.